Min Woo Lee joining the Smiley Show. Currently, you are in Australia right now at your home in Perth. It's 9 a.m., top of the morning, too. You got a cup of cup of coffee going right now? Are you a coffee drinker? Nah. Um, I mean, I love coffee, but I've had a bad experience. We can talk about it, but I've had a bad experience with um with coffee. Uh when I first I had my first coffee when uh, it was just before uh, around and um, didn't go well. So um, I have bad experience. I have a bad experience from coffee. So uh, no, just water for me. <laughs> well, I don't. Did you happen to wake up and see what John Rom said about how there's not enough porta potties on the golf course on the PGA Tour? I did see that. Uh, Raise my hand. I was like, I feel yes, like sometimes, yes, yes. I feel like sometimes it, that's the that's the issue. Yes, but not. I mean, it's not an issue, but it would help <laughs> if there was a couple more. Man, I'm always looking around for the porta potties when I'm out there because I, I don't know if I just drink too much water or I just have a terrible bladder. But um, <laughs> I couldn't. I was. It's been one of my biggest issues with the PGA Tour. Everybody's talking about all this live PGA Tour drama. Porta potties. We want porta potties. <laughs> we want porta potties, and we we need more of them. <laughs> oh man, dude, this I'm looking at this kind of cave you got here. It looks like your room, and oh. I mean, this just looks like the most epic Call of Duty setup. Is that true? Well, yeah, I've got my gaming laptop that you're currently, your face is currently on. So, um, oh, so you got a gamer I laptop. Do. Yeah, I have a gaming laptop. So at first I did bring my PS4 around, but you know, that thing's huge. So I can't really, you know, have it in my suitcase. But during COVID, I did bring it around when I was on the DP World Tour and um, it was it was just too much. So I uh, ended up getting <laughs> a, made my first check and then I uh, decided to buy myself a gaming laptop. So do you still game on the road? Uh, now and then. It's been pretty average lately, um, but I might start getting back into it. But I love playing it. I love playing it with my mates, but I just sometimes I just don't have time for it. So um, yes and no. Well, you sound like me because, well, first off, I have a kid and that kind of definitely takes up more of your time. But during COVID, man, there was nothing better with the boys, everybody hopping on Call of Duty and I tell you what, I would come back if they brought back the original Verdansk map. Then I would yeah. probably be back in, landed hospital with the boys, camping up top. That's there's nothing better. <laughs> and rebirth. Oh my god, we need it back. I think modern the new modern warfare is coming out in like a week. So I'll get definitely or like a couple of weeks. So I'll definitely uh, look at that. Yeah, it it seems like it's kind of heading into that time of the year where it starts to get a little cooler in the in the. Uh, you're rubbing off the, you're dusting off the, the gaming consoles, mm-hmm. but well, you're Australian now, but, uh, growing up there, obviously your sister is somebody that, uh, kind of came onto the scene first. She's won, you know, two times, uh, major champion. I'm just curious, what was it like kind of growing up with her? What was that dynamic like? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was pretty chill. I mean, I was, it's just the normal brother and sister combo. Mm-hmm. She was kind of like the quiet one and I was a little shit and still am. So it's just a normal thing like that. I've, I, know <laughs> the, I know the crap out of her and she just goes on with a day usually. And um, it was pretty, it was pretty chill. I mean, we, she didn't like me practicing cause yeah, I would annoy her. So she would just do her own thing and then I would just do my own thing. And um, yeah, we're pretty very, we're very opposite as people. Um but yeah, it was just a normal, normal sibling relationship. Uh, I don't get to see her too much. So when we do see each other, it's just normal conversation and not too much golf. But um, again, still annoy the crap out of her. <laughs> well, you say you're opposite individuals. What would uh, what would you say would be all similarity and differences? Oh, I mean, we don't have... The uh, the only similar t- similarities we have is more just like golf and travel and you know right. we we are alone a lot so we kind of know what it's like and then I mean differences I mean we're just completely different people if she's going left I'm going right <laughs> if she's a straight line I'm like the biggest squiggly line ever so um, <laughs> so yeah she's quiet and I'm loud so yeah it's uh but I think I think when you live with someone that's like that you you know you adapt to like a different i don't know i just i'm yeah more like dad and mum's more like mum and yeah i mean i love that though there's nothing wrong with that and but when i think of min we lee the pga tour golfer the world class player i immediately picture what you wear 
And I would imagine that's one way you separate yourself from Minji, but also pretty much the rest of the golfing world. I mean, you wear this, the mock tee, the mustache, the mullet, the Oakleys. I mean, dude, it's a vibe. Like, do you wake up and look in the mirror and you put on your clothes? You're like, I am the swaggiest person in the world. <laughs> uh, lately, I I feel like that, but I, no, it's been amazing. I mean, the last six, since probably the players, it's definitely popped off. Um, and it's been awesome. Uh, and yeah, I guess just, I, I don't know why I grew the mustache, but I just did it. And then it kind of st- stayed with me a little bit. People kind of noticed it. I still get smack for it because it's not really a mustache. It's just like <laughs> a few strands of hair, but That's fine. I mean, yeah, for, it's fine. Yeah. From far away, it actually doesn't look terrible. So I thought, you know, I would rock it. And then, you know, since I've come out a little bit um like more popular out on the on the pj tour i've just i've just kept it and i uh, probably won't shave it for a long time i did i did shave it i said to myself you know i've been i've been playing really good i'm going to keep it and then i missed a few cuts i missed a cut at masters and the hilton and then i was like okay i'll shave it and then it started to come back started to come back and i felt <laughs> a little bit in my groove and i'm like okay i'm going to keep it um and then just though please you know i've you know i've I just wanted to protect my eyes. So I just, you know, those were the best looking yeah. ones on my, on my face and I got a big head. So kind of, <laughs> kind of worked out nicely. And um, yeah, I've just, I've just kept it. The mock what tea was uh, in the lettuce. The mock tea was, it was the, le- yeah, I have been growing out. It's getting a little dirty, which is not good. So I think I'll cut it a inch or two off. Um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah, the mullet was. I've probably had the mullet for a year and a half, couple of years. So, um, but yeah, I mean, everyone's kind of catching on to it. So I got to keep that. Um, and then obviously the mock tea is the biggest thing. And uh, I, I when I first got it from my clothing company, I was like, oh my god, what is this? What? Why do they send me this? And uh, I just had it in my suitcase because I ha- I wasn't home for like six months. So I I, I tr- tried it on on a practice round, and I was like, it actually feels pretty good. And a lot of people were recognizing just from. The, just like a few people like walking around our practice round and they're like damn nice shirt i was like okay I'll, I'll i'll stick with it so then i mean every time i feel it and every time i want to wear it um i ended up i end up wearing it and it i guess it makes me feel good and play good so um i've had i've had a pretty good success with the the three the three combo there and um yeah hopefully i can keep it going yeah, I don't know if I could do the stash. I mean, I've I've tried to grow out the lettuce in the back. I've never wore a mock tee. I'll, I'll say that, uh, but it's a vibe, man. You're you're crushing that look, and um, you kind of mentioned this too that your popularity in the U.S. is kind of um, you know upkicked a bunch. I've noticed it, and I talked to your caddy Stuart Davidson about it, and that was one of the things he he said just in the U.S. this year. Your popularity just kept skyrocketing. And one of the things that I kept hearing was the chant. Woo! Like, <laughs> I think that's like the most, where was the first time you heard that, the woo chant? It, well, at, so it was, uh, it was cool because on, on TikTok, um, someone commented like on the PJ tour, it's gonna, you know, everyone's going to scream woo. And I was like, Oh, hopefully. And then I did get out on the PJ tour and I played, I played the players where I play, I was playing really good. Like up until the, you know, third round, I was in the, I was near the lead with Scotty and um, they were deaf. They were screaming that. And it was, it was such a cool feeling. And um, (laughs) it was kind of just like a experience where I would, you know, always cherish, but it was cool because at first when someone commented that I was like, you know, that would be really cool. And then, like every tournament since then it's been pretty crazy and the open the open the us open and the um and travelers that's when it really like that's when it was really big that was loud and every time i hit a shot there would be a scream of woo and it was pretty it's a pretty good feeling it's a really good feeling it was loud at the open man because i was with you on saturday there coming down the stretch and and, i mean the weather was crap and they were still just like i mean they were just loving it man every time you'd smash one out there is just that that woo chant and now in my head i'm gonna do it every time you you hit a shot (laughs) (laughs) but the worst thing is they just scream woo even i've just hit it into the trees and they just scream and i'm like oh my god i mean just it 
<laughs> slice one right in the water. Just yeah, and you're just like yeah. God. Shut up, like. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, you know, I've dreamt of that as like a little kid. You know, I wanted something like that, and it's been, you know, it's. I'm in that situation now, so it's. I'm pretty grateful for it. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool feeling. I, I love it, and I, I feel like I've played pretty good since all that popularity has happened. I love playing in front of a crowd, and I love showing off. And it, it's been, it's been, it's been really fun, and been really good. Uh, really good. Um, I guess a, yeah, a time in my life and yeah. my golfing career. Oh, I mean, you've been showing off on social media for a long time. I can't remember when it was, but it was probably <laughs> on maybe Instagram, but maybe like TikTok. I'm not sure exactly which platform it was. And Min Woo Lee shows up on my timeline. And a lot of times I'll say with golf swings that you see that are like really solid, you question like, oh, are they actually a good player? You know, because you, you don't know who they are. And then I looked you up and I was like, oh, this guy's a stud. And the shots you were hitting were like these stingers or just <laughs> you're wailing on a driver. And I'm thinking to myself, I was like, this might be the first golf influencer like this is before golf influencers were even a thing uh to to really be a world-class player and that's kind of what is exactly what has happened but i feel like you're so authentic on social media and you love having fun with it that everybody seems to kind of know who minwoo is yeah exactly I, i've i've always been kind of like a performer i guess and i loved you know love just showing off and you know love social media since i was a little kid i um, it all kind of started when I was at Sahali for the Sahali amateur tournament. And um, if you've been there, there's trees, there's just massive trees everywhere. And you can, yeah. when you hit a stinger, you can actually see the ball trace. So that's when it first started. And I, I went back there a couple of times. I played the tournament twice, I think. And every time I got there, I just had these like videos of me hitting stingers and every, I was like, that's pretty cool. I should do it on like nearly every hole. And now I've just got like a whole bunch of videos and I post it now and then. And I posted one like a couple of days ago of me hitting a stinger. Not it was in Dubai, but not in um Sahali. But you know, I since then I kind of it kind of went viral and I was like, oh, this is like this is what social media is like. And it it would be pretty cool if I was, you know, at this moment right now, just like kind of popping off and people love just <laughs> love just what I post, which is, which is awesome. And I just thought, you know, I would, I like to make people's lives a little better and more fun. And I just thought, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm playing bad, I would still like to, you know, give people the experience of, you know, pro life kind of thing and what I'm kind of going through, like, and um, it's even better that I'm playing good and um, that's been popping off too. So uh, it's been, it's a good combo to have and hopefully it can last a while. Absolutely. And I, I need to hear more about your stingers because I've seen it firsthand. And I've every time I got the microphone in my hand and you got the two iron out, um, mm -hmm. I'm just pumping up the viewers to just get, I mean, because you know, you're going to be able to see it take off because you legitimately hit it high, head high at, yeah. at Colonial this year. I tried to get as close to, to the fairway as I possibly could. So I could just feel the buzz of the ball go by me like <laughs> like a like the racetrack at Talladega Nights. I just want to feel it, you know. <laughs> it 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 is the best feeling hitting it straight out the middle and just knowing that it just come off flush. It it isn't the easiest shot to hit under pressure or like no, because you or, get steep on it. You get steep on it quick. Yeah, you, you get know? steep, and then people, you know, like at the open, especially I as soon as I took the two iron out and like most people had three woods of drivers, people were like stinger, stinger, stinger. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh shit, I got to hit a stinger now. Uh, but I, obviously i obviously don't listen to them like that, but I'm like, Oh, knowing, like knowing me, I'm like, I want to show off. So I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe I'll hit this a little lower than I, that I wanted to. And, uh, end up hitting it bad and I'm like, oh, I should have just hit a normal one. But uh <laughs> it's it is the nicest feeling when you do when you do hit it clean. Yeah, take us through the art of how to hit a proper stinger. Do you adjust oh. just ball position? Do you aim left or you just sit down and smash on it? No, I I feel like hitting the stinger cut is harder than the draw. I like to kind of like smother it. So I'm definitely not aiming left. I'm aiming further right if anything and then kind of really? just Holding it, holding it. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, tee it up a little higher so you can hit down on it. Um, oh, yes. That's the best. Put it back in my stance. Put it back in my stance. And, you know, obviously the club's got to be, you know, on track, man, it's like 
zero launch, like zero degree launch. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's a tough shot to hit. It's a very tough shot to hit, but it's, you know, I've, I've kind of done it for a while now and you just need a lot of speed. I mean, people yeah. want to know how to hit it, but it's, it's one of the toughest shots to hit, I think, because you, you need a lot of speed and if you don't have it, then it's hard to kind of get the ball rising. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so. Tiger was so, oh, we, we watched Tiger do it forever. You know, that was the shot yeah. that he would hit under pressure. And mm-hmm. I always tried to hit that shot under pressure because one of the things that Tiger Woods always would say is, especially under when he was starting to feel it a little bit, he always would try to get the ball on the ground as soon as possible. Yeah. And that always stuck with me. But I wish I would have known that stingers were so difficult to hit because sometimes they got me in trouble because <laughs> I get yeah, steep on it. Exactly. Hit it right. <laughs> exactly. Like it's supposed to be an easier shot. So you hit it. And then, you know, sometimes the mind says, you know, because it's a you know short part or because it's an easy shot, then you should, you should just automatically do it. And that's like the hardest part is <laughs> producing the easier or not easy, but like, yeah, easier shots. And um, yeah, it's sometimes just, nicer to just hit the driver and if it goes yeah, a little course. off at least you're further up <laughs> well i mean i've never s- seen anybody or at least i've n- i've never done it i've never hit a bad shot on instagram ever in my life <laughs> that i've posted so anytime you get to post that instagram stinger you know it's going to be a perfect one but exactly. i'm i'm really curious who produces your social clips because they are absolute fire um so it so when I came out on the PJ tour, I don't know, just like just out of nowhere, just, you know, um, Jake and Muhammad, uh, on the PJ tour, uh, media guys, they came out and they were like, Hey, we're just going to record you for a few, few holes. And uh, literally two, three holes in the practice round, they're just getting shots that I'm hitting and they make this sick video. So before the last two, the last two have been the best. And like the open one was absolutely just, unreal. That I, well, who came up with that one, idea? The open one and the and the Scottish open one was crazy with Tyler Creator going psych and then it and then I ended up hitting <laughs> it. Just so um, good. But it, it but it, that wasn't scripted because like a bee went in my face so I like and like and my hair so I went like I went like that yeah. and then because it was on my back screen I stopped and I went like this and it's like psych and then I actually <laughs> hit the shot. So um, they ca- hit, so Jake came up with the idea and Muhammad came up with the idea too and um, Jake's the Jake's the videographer and um, you know they just as a media team, they just make up a video. And it's before that it was just like normal kind of cool videos. And then, right. We just, I don't know why well, I don't, we, I, we I don't used, talk to Jake. I, I, yeah. We used to just use our phones and create like maybe exactly. something that we could make on the app. But now that you have this to your disposal, it's, it's just another way to grow your brand too. And it's, it's exactly. And it's so fun. Exactly. I feel like I need to pay, pay, pay the guys on the media team. Um, uh, but definitely, uh, De- yeah just they just had this mind and they were like okay we're gonna especially the open one right he he goes hey we're gonna give you this like meme of a guy at a pub and like guys just drinking and stuff and i was like that's a little weird but okay just you know i trust them they they do a good job so i was like okay and then it was the it was the, i forgot the name of the um name of the guy what what club he supports but it something radar and um it was like this this is an iconic video not many i don't think not many americans know but it's more like a european vibe yep. and obviously we're at the we're at the we're in england so we're like so he he made it and i'm like oh my god this is so sick i i so we have yeah so he gives me the video and i check it and i'm like oh i think i need to do this or that so then we change it up a little bit and then ended up posting it but uh the, yeah those guys helped me help have helped me out over the last few last few months and um yeah, credit to them. They've been amazing. Uh, I need- so, and then I just I just think of a caption, and I do all my media myself. But the mm-hmm. hype videos and the videos they they obviously do them for me, and and then I just post it. Well, I know I need to text now when I need a hype video for my announcing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. But I'm going be out sick. there. You should do that. You should do that. <laughs> just have the mic and you. <laughs> what does let him cook? What does that mean? Uh just where, let him where cook. does start? Just, just let him cook. 
which is <laughs> my my parents is, would say he's he's like oh does he like cook like food uh, and stuff? people like, have asked me that it's like oh do you actually cook do you? i'm like no i'm not a great chef i i would i made i made myself bacon and eggs this morning which is something but um <laughs> nothing fancy uh it just i don't know it was just like a meme on tiktok or instagram and someone commented it or someone said it so then i put it in a caption and then now everyone just started saying it and at the travelers you know let that young man cook and let, let him cook and cook. so many people yeah so it's... many people just said it after my shot or something like that it's caught on camera and it's just popped off i don't know i don't know where it came from <laughs> i don't know where it originated from but just let him do his thing let him go make some birdies and let him cook it's it's an easy it's an easy thing it's a good phrase it's it's awesome i it's, love it now it, yeah now it's just ingrained in in the and the woo fam and the woo fans <laughs> especially this generation they they see let them cook and they see something like that and they're like oh yeah we get it like we get that type of uh verbiage and slang but yeah my my parents and frank Nablo, <laughs> even in a commercial break uh somebody asked frank and said hey uh let him cook and and What's frank's that? trying to figure out what the heck it means and and we were gonna talk about it on air and it's like man we probably shouldn't this is gonna go off <laughs> a tangent and but uh, man, I, I think it's i think it's awesome oh it's 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 it is pretty cool um i i don't know just let him cook what how would you describe that uh, i don't know I, I need a hat that thing. says it first so like you need to get I know, a hat so i, I might, can get one i might start i might start doing some merch i'll probably yeah. have to hey yeah, I, know, I, was, well, I, I, gotta, I should trademark that stuff. Absolutely, yeah, Tr trademark <laughs> or whatever you want to put my name on it too. So I'll get some royalties on it. That'd cool. be great, you know. Like yeah, people, oh, perfect, people. perfect. We'll, we'll do our, we'll do our thing. <laughs> Let us cook. <laughs> Let us cook. <laughs> well, I know you have got to just be chomping at the bit. You've continued to get better and better. It seems like every event that you play, and I was surprised to look back to see that your last win was at the Scottish open in 2021. And I went through to see how many top tens you've had since that victory. And you've had 13. And in my head, I'm like, that is just an absurd amount of good play. And especially when I look at it too, how close you were to winning so many of those events. I'm not sure how close it was in your mind, but from the way you look at it for those 13 top tens how close were you to winning those and and were there some events where you felt like man i'm just not quite getting over the hump of winning and, and i'm just kind of learning as i'm going um yeah i've it's obviously when i look back at it the the close tournaments that i've won you know second third top fives mm -hmm. um more, more the top threes you kind of look back and you're like oh, i could have done this and i could have done that um, obviously it's tough when you're in the, when you're in the moment and right. trying to hit the perfect shot. But I think, you know, these days it's so hard to win and it's actually not bad coming second, third. And, Heck no. um, I have that, you know, it's, it's not the greatest mentality of like, okay, but I also have to give credit to myself because you start changing too much and you end up trying to do something completely different. And, you know, sometimes winning, yeah, it's so hard that, you know, if you just keep doing the right things and it ends up going your way, you know, a couple breaks here and there, and that's one or two shots. And then that's, you know, that's the win. So I know, I know just from, you know, other people and just from playing, it's, you know, just to keep the same and you're doing the right things, just keep plodding along and hopefully you do end up, end up getting over the line. But, you know, it's, it does, it seems like, you know, someone else has played really good to beat me which mm. was most of the cases. So, I mean, you can't really do too much about that. Hopefully, you know, one day you can end up just having a string of birdies, which at the Scottish Open, I, I made six birdies in a row on the front nine. And yep. looking back at it, I haven't done anything like that since. And it just happens. Like you just hole a few parts, hole one 30 footer, and then that's a sixth birdie. And you're just like, all right, now I'm in the lead and hopefully you can just keep going. So it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's tough. It's tough. I don't think I, you know, trying to get over the hump. I, I know I just, you know, got to stay patient and golf is about that. And um, it's been awesome. I mean, I've, I feel like I could have won one or two. There was one kind of unlucky moment um, in Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. um, where I was doing really well. And then um, Victor ended up holding a bunker shot 
on 17 and you know it's a it's not a it's not a easy bunker shot it's a tough one and you know ended up spinning it back in the hole so i i you know it was it was a moment where okay you can't really do anything about that that just happens that's what golf is that's you know down the stretch that stuff happens and it's not like i did anything wrong it's you know he someone else came out and did better so uh you know just just plot along be patient and hopefully you win one yeah is there any older guys or veterans or uh mentors to you that are you know that have won or have been highly successful have you asked them any questions on how to win more is that something that you're like you kind of said i'm just going to keep plotting along doing my thing and knowing that the results are going to come i'm not that they aren't already coming i'm just talking about uh kind of getting lifting the trophies like i'm sure you want to yeah um no not really i i think i think a lot of people are a little careful of giving me advice cuz i feel like i've you know i'm close to winning and you know i'm a competitor still do to them and you know Adam Scott, Jason, they, I've been very good friends with them over the last couple of years. And it's more not like asking the advice. It's just kind of like picking off what they do. So, you know, every time I'm playing with Jason, Day, someone's looking at his putting stroke, someone's looking at, you know, just like these little things that normally I'll just go and just putt and just, you know, so it might not be for me or you, but I, it's good to see, you know, the best putter. And well, I mean, I consider him one of the greatest putters of all time just his stroke everything looks so, so perfect <laughs> everything looks so perfect and i'm like why and how does he do it and you see him on the putting putting green and practicing and you know his caddy luke's recording a video like nearly every time just to see like what he's doing like just picking out little specific things and same as scotty i mean adam adam's just plots along goes along his thing and you know he i feel like with his swing and with his, because my approach game's not as good as it needs to be. Um, and if it does get better, I feel like I could, you know, compete more and the more, the the better approach play weeks I've had, I've played really good. So, and obviously Adam's one of the best ball strikers in the world. And, um, and, you know, he's had, he's had, I guess, trouble with his putter now and then, but when mm-hmm. I play with him, he puts so good and he, like he, he's not as bad as, what people think and he's actually very good i'm pretty sure in the strokes game list i'm sure he's somewhat up there he's been putting really good with his putter now and just like i think just to having the mentality of you know of that i think playing with them and practicing with them just plodding along be patient and it sounds so cliche but that's just what you got to do and i've seen so many people you know try to change their swing and change that just from like even successes so um um trying my best just to stay happy and just right. keep playing golf. Well, I want to kind of highlight something that when I was kind of digging through your stats of what you're just absurdly good at, the combination that you have with your driver and your putter is why I think you're so good at at some of the most difficult golf courses in the world at the biggest events. I mean, you have the third highest club head speed on the PGA Tour at 125 miles an hour. And you were in the putting categories. I mean, from five feet, you were the best putter on tour and you're fifth inside of 10 feet. So putts inside of 10 feet when you're making more, more than you miss and you're closer to the hole than the other guys. I mean, that is such a lethal combo. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's a funny one. I, I like, so with putting, um, I was, uh, you know, obviously the, when you're putting t- bad you normally go to the putting green and you practice and practice and practice and i don't know it's been weird but over the last year or so i've developed a good pre-shot routine and developed you know just to not be overthinking and just to putt and i think i've been on the putting green for like uh it's not long it's not long at all before the before the before the tournament starts, I probably, I just putt around. I never do like, I never do like drills or anything. I just, I, I kind of just stay away from it, even with my chipping and my chipping and putting is so good. Like I normally people go, you know, i got to grind this out. i got to do five feet drill. And I've been kind of like that since I was a kid, you know, my coach and I, you know, trying to get pressure situations. And I think I got pretty good at that. And then all of a sudden when, you know, the ball comes off where you want it to start, I've, I've just not, 
bothered to really go onto the putting green and practice, which is a funny thing. And I feel like the more I practice putting, I get worse. I don't know if it's expectations or what, but I just, you know, have been just going out before the tournament and yeah, doing doing my mat, you know, my mat with the right. um with the arc mm-hmm. and just putt around. But that's obviously pre pre round, and that's obviously you're just getting the speed of the greens. But I haven't been able, I haven't been doing any drills, which is weird. Um, and I've been putting so good, so I don't know who can explain that one, but. I don't know. The less is more, I guess, for me. And um, and my driving, I've just been, I've just always been a long hitter, and I found a good combo with my drive. I changed, I changed my ball and my shafts and and um, my driver head. And you know, ever since that, I've been pretty solid. So I, I don't get into equipment that much. I let the Callaway guys help me out there, and um, you know, with their expertise of of clubs, like they just tell me what to do, and I said. I just let them do it. I hit the ball. I don't like it or I do like it. And um, I'm kind of trusting it a little bit more and uh, it's been really good. That's so funny that what you talked about with the putting and and you and I are exactly the same way with with the driver. When talk about building something, it's like, hey, I, I'm not the smart guy here. You, you guys figure it out and I'll yeah. just, I'll let you know if I like it or not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, they've been out there for so many years. They know, they don't even, yeah, you just need to tell them this is what I do. This is what the ball does. And they're like, okay, let's try this. And it's just kind of a trial and everything. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, you kind of mentioned a little bit ago that your iron game is something, your approach to the green is something that you're definitely going to be working um, harder on as you continue to um, continue to improve on the PGA tour. I'm curious what's kind of been the, is it something in your golf swing? Is it something, um, are you, are you struggling hit it pin high? Are you kind of getting too aggressive? What's kind of been something that you've learned the most about your iron game this year? Yeah. Uh, when, when I'm, when I have the good results and I'm hitting it good, like I don't really think about it too much, you know, it's just what I've been, what I've practiced before on the range and kind of ingrained and grained and grained. And then, it's kind of just natural, but when it gets, you know, I, I'm such a field player where if Mm. it doesn't feel good, it feels so bad in my hands. And I don't think people realize like how much your golf swing changes from week to week, just from traveling. And, you know, some like at the open, you're hitting lower shots because it's windy and you don't, but that's one thing I look back at, um, because the ball and the equipment's so good, like, but I, but in my head, I try to manipulate the ball flight so much. I try to hit it lower, and I'm, and when I watch, you know, Seb, I, I play with Seb Stracker on the last round of the Open, and you know, he was off. Um, I think it was a Sunday. He was going. He was running. He was having a good run at it, and he just hits this little draw every time. Same as Adam Scott. Same as you know the best ball striker. They just hit this little draw, and he's not trying to hit it lower. He's not trying to do that. Like, um, but. You know, you know, I feel like I've been I'm a really good player and I play with people like Seb and you know, I've beaten him in tournaments plenty of times, but I still pick off pick off things like that. I'm like, why is this guy so good? He's he obviously hits it amazing, but he was just hitting the same shot and doesn't matter what lie it was, he was just seeing a little draw and just kind of trusting what he had. And me, I just I'm such a field player. I like to see shots and I like to play different shots. It's more just when I, you know, just hit a fade or just hit a draw, that's when I can trust it and actually hit the shot that I want. But then I try to hit like a straight one because it, you know, because it asks for it. And then I hit it, you know, a bit offline. And then that, and then if my, if you put yourself in a tough position, you're not going to make up and down, that's your bogey. Well, you could have just hit a 10 meter, 10 yard draw from the right side to a right pin and just hit it on the green and just hold the part or two part. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just, trying to be a little less and just kind of going out and playing with the swing that you've trusted on the range and not try to do low draws, high fades and stuff like that. Just the best weeks I've been just from trusting what I've had and just keep doing the same shot over and over again. Yeah. We're the same person. <laughs> it's, that's exactly because I, <laughs> I always see the perfect shot and, and more often than not, it would get me into trouble, but there was nothing better than the weeks 
where you could hit every single window and shape it back and do a right to left win with a fade and hold it perfectly. It's just like you said, when it's off the feeling and you can't exactly figure out exactly what it is. So you're kind of trying to play that correction game in your head. It's like, is it, is it just a little bit of this? And so you're kind of going through the whole list, but because you're manipulating so many different kind of things and you're just relying on your feel. And when you kind of lose that, you're like, what shot do I play? Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah. It's yeah. And, but playing pro golf, it's like, it's not always, it's not how good you hit it. It's just how, like how you can miss it. And if your mm-hmm. miss is just like a skinny fade and you just hit it, you know, a skinny fade, you can actually just get away with, you know, playing your misses and you know, if the ball is going one way, which is, have been a big help, you know, if you can miss the ball one way, then it's, it helps your game a lot because, you know, sometimes par is actually not a bad score. And, you know, when you're on, you make a few birdies and, you know, you only need to make four or five birdies around and you're, and you're golden. So it's not like you need to be so aggressive every time. And um, that's, you know, that's what pro golf kind of teaches you and, stuff like that. So, uh, you, yeah, you learn from it and yeah, it's more the things that you trust and you go back to and you can rely on. And that's kind of been a key for the last year for me. I've just been hitting that two iron a lot, hitting, hitting nice right. fade off the, with the driver and just putting good and just the trust. Yeah. It sounds like it's simplifying the game. And I kind of want to yeah. run through just the the five biggest events you played this year, um, kind of run it through the players and then all the way through uh, the four majors that you played and uh, starting off the year, the players, you finished sixth. Uh, were you in the final group on, on Sunday? Is that, is that memory served me correct? Yeah. And, yeah. So I was in the final group with Scotty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what was it like playing with Scotty that day, seeing him win? I I know you had two sevens that day. So if those were, you just mm-hmm. par those holes, I mean, you, you finished second, just what was that week? Like uh, seeing Scotty getting the job done? Yeah, it's, again like just just picking off what he did on that final day he it wasn't anything like crazy obviously he's just very good at most things but he was just plodding along you know doing what champions do right they they kind of just do their thing hit it in the right spot make a two part but then he you know he did go on a run i think from like Whole, I don't know, six to thirteen. He made like four or five birdies, in, like out of them, and he chipped in but he somewhere just, there too. I think. Yeah, he just yeah, he chips in a lot, but it just <laughs> like I, I did give him a. I made a birdie on the first hole, and I think he made bogey on the third hole, and then we were level. Um, and then I made I made a triple on hole four, and it was you know it's an e- it's a pretty it's not a hard hole. It's it it can get you in trouble, but you know I I hit this like hit this wedge that I shouldn't, the lob wedge that I should have probably hit a sand wedge. And that's another learning curve. I love using my lob wedge wherever and everywhere. doesn't matter what light is. I'll hit it low. I'll hit it high. I love using it. And you know, that kind of got me in trouble, but that's just a learning curve that I learned from that week. And every week I learned something, every round I learned something. So, um, but he just, he just plotted along, made the birdies. And then I don't know what he ended up winning two or three, but it was just, it was class act. It was just, great golf that's i mean he's been playing like that for so long and no wonder he's playing top i don't know his top 10 stats or top 12 stats or something is just unreal or something i don't know like 20 tournaments in a row or something stupid so um you can definitely see that he just does that because he doesn't do anything wrong never um, he does a couple couple things really good approach play is obviously amazing um and when his putting is just a little on then it's it's pretty tough to beat so um yeah, I want to get my approach play something like what he does. And but like when I just go back to it, it's nothing crazy. It's just over and over, repetitive, same thing. And he then hits a close and makes a birdie. So it's um he's a good player. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, my you met my uh co-host and producer Charlie Hume, and I I've finally figured it out that I think Scotty Sheffer plays the exact same round every single day. <laughs> it's yeah. he, he yeah. never has anything different than than the day before where i felt like when i played i didn't know what each day would hold scotty wakes up and he's like you know what i'm pretty sure i'm gonna shoot 68 today like yeah exactly and it's gonna look pretty similar (laughs) yeah yeah he's uh but that's what i mean he's what he's been he like first few years of pro i don't think he was you know that well known and as soon as he came out on the pga tour he gets a little confidence gets a little trust has his own craft and just goes out and plays. And that's what 
a lot of amateurs and pros have to do. It's not nothing crazy. Just keep doing the same thing and it will probably fall into place. Yeah. And uh, I just kind of go through those last four events. So Masters missed the cut, US Open, T5, great week. You played amazing mm-hmm. on Sunday where we played extremely difficult. No bogeys to, if from my recollection. And then the Open Championship, you know, you were second to last group going into the uh, into the weekend or on Sunday. It all kind of blends together. I feel like when I was over there, I was like, I've, I saw you a lot. I can't remember exactly which group, but <laughs> Uh, any takeaways from just Masters US Open or the Open that stood out from you? Uh, I just love majors and big tournaments. I, I don't know what it is. It's a great problem, not even a problem, but great thing to have. I've obviously you want to perform in the majors, but I don't know. I just, I think just the hype and just the, you know, I go back to, you know, me being a show off and trying to have the attention. And I think I just love, you know, getting off to a decent start. And I mean, I didn't even have a, de- a like good start at the open. I've made, I was, I don't know, one or two over after four holes every time. And it was terrible, but you know, I didn't let that get to me. And I know the open, you know, it's, it's tough. It's not easy. And uh, I think just the toughness of the courses, you know, making, you know, when you get onto a regular tour event, that's, you know, 25 under wins. Like if you make a bogey, you're going two steps back. Someone's like half the field's making birdie on that hole. So it's kind of tough for me, but to, I guess, mentally, like, you know, you want to start getting aggressive, 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 but that's one thing. Another thing I learned, um, don't try to chase, just keep doing the same thing. And, um, it, as the majors happen, you know, obviously pars a really good score and birdies come now and then. So I think that mentality and also um, just the expectation, if you, you know, if you make a bogey, it does, it's okay. You know, people probably half the field's making bogey or a quarter of the field's making bogey. So you can just kind of plod along and um, keep, keep going. And bogeys aren't, it's not, ter- they're not terrible, but um, you know, when you play regular, birdie fest events then that's that's my mind i'm like oh i'm, I'm a bit right. behind here let's go chase yeah that makes total sense and mm-hmm. as i'm walking uh down the 18th hole with you at the open championship and i'm hearing all the woos and this and that <laughs> as you're walking up uh, yeah I, I actually played that 18th hole super aggressive that day and pushed away up there but yeah. dan hicks our our play-by-play guy for nbc was uh talking about how jason day uh, basically said that you had all the tools, uh, to be the number one player in the world, uh, someday. And I'm not sure if you caught wind of that comment or if you've heard that before, if he's told you that, but coming from another Aussie and, and especially a guy like Jason day, who you talked about how you've kind of looked up to him growing up. I mean, what does that mean to you? And, and do you, do you believe him? Yeah. Um, it's, oh, it's awesome. Uh, Jason, I grew up loving and watching Jason and, you know, he's come from, you know, an Asian background and he's, you know, been an Australian for his whole life and um, coming out of Queensland, it's the opposite side of me, but um, just seeing his progress coming out. And obviously when he got to number one, I, um, you know, there was a tournament in um, Sage Valley, the junior invitation when he was our, he was our athlete um, to come out and give us a junior clinic. And that was such an amazing experience. It was the first time I met him and, uh, yeah, I, I, he's such a good guy. Like I, I can't speak enough of, you know, how much he's helped and, you know, just being a friend, like I, I go out, I asked him, text him, Hey, let's go have a practice run. He's like, okay, sure. Like he, he makes time for me, which is awesome. And, um, yeah, it's, it's good that it, they're good golfers. Um, you know, Scotty and Jason and, but just better people, which is awesome. And I, I mean, I do believe that I could, get to number one in the world one day, obviously it's a long way and I, mm-hmm. and I'm humble along the way. It's, it's going to be tough road. Obviously these younger guys are coming out and playing really good. And I, you know, I feel like I'm at a pretty good spot. I, I, as long as I'm slowly getting better each day and trying to get, trying to get better. Um, I think it will hopefully work out. Um, I'm learning, you know, to get more comfortable along in the majors and um, some tournaments. And uh, this year has been a very big, development year for me uh um although i didn't get the win it was a very successful year i mean and we're only six months into the year so it's it's um it's a pretty cool feeling that people do believe me in that you know it's um yeah just not to get too ahead of myself and you know i didn't hear dan i didn't hear i i don't know if i heard it or not but 
you don't let that stuff get to you and you just want to keep doing your thing. But it's kind of, it's cool coming from a friend and coming from a former world number one, which is cool. Well, if you didn't hear it from him, him, you would have heard it from me because I I believe that too, because I think you have all the talent skill. You got, you're humble, you're mature beyond your years. And um, I do think that's something that is totally something that you can achieve. And um, as we kind of look ahead um, to next year, and I know you just talked about how you don't like looking ahead, but this is something that, I mean, just the opportunity potentially to be on the international team next year for the president's cup what would it mean for you to be paired with jason day in a format like that oh it would be it would be unreal i um i feel like i just missed out last year i uh, played really played decent in the majors and i thought you know i could i didn't play great in i didn't play good at all in the pj events i missed every card i played but um the majors i thought stood out to me and hopefully other people and i was like okay i might um get a chance to play but then i didn't end up getting into the team so that was a little fire in the belly and since then i've been playing pretty good so um you know some things like that i mean i wouldn't call it a failure but you know something you know it's it's a success to get on the team and i didn't get on it and that kind of lit a little fire in me and uh i've been playing good since so uh, it would be amazing i mean i i love representing australia i love representing um like a team and that was a big thing in australian golf culture that we play for our state and there was so many state versus state events and I always thrived off it and always loved match play too. So, um, you know, I've played a lot of, lot of, with a lot of Americans and I've played with a lot of the international guys. So I have a lot of, um, friends on both sides and, uh, it'll be pretty fun. I love, um, I love that type of stuff and I would love to just go out and try and try and beat the Americans. Obviously the team is pretty good. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, it would just be it would be an honor to represent uh, the international side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it seemed like last year there was some actually some pretty good synergy that came out of that that in international side for future uh, for future cups. I think it'll be much more competitive as uh, as the years kind of go on with that younger generation uh, that 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 played seemingly so well at that Presidents Cup. But I have to tell you this, uh, Charlie and I are we're big fans of yours and we kind of just adopted you as like our, you're like, you're our guy. And we just randomly, I think about a month ago, we're like, all right, I think this was after the travelers championship where you played well. And I was like, dude, I'm so in on men. Like what, what's he playing in next? And now we're breaking down your schedule. Like, wait, maybe he's going to be <laughs> playing over here at the DP world tour. Is he could be playing the British <laughs> masters. I mean, we were just diving into it all. And now I'm thinking, okay, where are you playing next? Because the special temporary member uh, status thing that you got last year, which by the way, I, I don't think I've ever understood what special temporary member means. Like I, I, I kind of disagree with that whole system. I feel like for someone like you, it, there's, there seemed to be a skip step along the way that it just made sense. Like for someone like you and Akshay to, get points as you're going and how guys are coming off of college, getting a full PGA tour card where like, you're not even like able to earn points. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And if you want to go into it, fine, if not, but I, I definitely want to know what you're playing and coming up. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty close to getting my card both ways. Uh, I'm at 400 plus points on the PGA tour. Uh, and that I'm pretty close. I, I just got to wait until the fall events um, to see if I'm in the top 125. So I got that to wait in and I may throw in one of the fall events um, just in case to. how, if I need to, if I need because to. Because you're DP World probably, Tour, you're fifth in the ranking. So yeah, is that yeah. something so, you're you're focusing more on that tour for the time being? Yes. Just, but you're just going to make sure like, hey, I got to, I just got to make yeah. sure I have my card for next year. Yeah, I think the, the, the status, the PGA Tours, um, like, uh, category is better than the European or the DP world tour category. I think the top 10 of the DP world get mm. behind the 125. So I think that's in gotcha. the back of our head. I don't think, I don't know if it'll make that much of a difference getting in events, but um, it will be nice to, you know, lock it up on the PJ tour and just play another event um, because maybe, uh, maybe along the road, there might be a bit of pressure, you know, when I go play in the DP world events and I am playing the Irish open, uh, Wentworth and French, French open the next, um, 
well, three in a row in about a few weeks. So uh, oh, that's my schedule for now. And then hopefully I can throw in a fall event. Um, but yeah, it's close. I mean, I would like to get into it because I'm in that situation. Um, obviously, Ar- Akshay has played really good and it's, in, I don't, he, so he's not in the playoffs, right? No, he's not. He's not. And that's absurd because he, he's won an event. And yeah, he didn't get to accumulate the cra- points. It just, exactly. it just doesn't so, make any sense to me. No. So I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I thought Cause like, wouldn't you, if you had- win, if you win, you're a member of the tour. And if I played a little bit better and got into the top 70 without being a member, I understand that because I didn't win. And that was, you know, from the start, but he has won. And for some reason it just, accu- I don't know. He just hasn't accumulated <laughs> enough. And I, I, it's, it's tough to see that because I think we both had amazing years and we don't get to play in the playoffs. And I think Will Zalatoris was yeah, yeah, a good yeah. example a couple of years, a few years ago. And um, I feel like that needs to be changed a little bit for players coming through. But I do understand because then there's an argument about why are these little, well, not little, but why are these young kids coming out and getting, getting starts while a 50 year old, 40 year old veteran has been on the tour for so long and, you know, we might take their job, but golf is brutal and every sport is brutal. Well, Someone's it's changing take... so much. It's, it's exactly. to me, it's, it's, I, I, this special temporary member status is like this fairy tale thing. That's like, what, what do you really get it? You, <laughs> you maybe get some sponsors invites, but they make a, such a big deal about, Oh, men, we has special temporary status. And everybody's like, Oh, wait, does he have his tour card? It's like, no, he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. He's got to go. And we don't really know how many points he has because we can't see it. It's just yeah. this, it's like you and your agent know, and that's just about yeah. it. <laughs> oh, even, even I don't know. I, I've, I've <laughs> got to ask. I've got to, and, yeah. And that's He's not got even to right. ask to get the answer. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I, I just mean, feel like I'm grateful. I'm grateful, but I, I think there's like a little, little thing where it needs to change there because we're trying to reward good play. We're trying to reward that type. And I feel like also I've done so much that I feel like I've done so much this year and I haven't, I mean, I might not get my PJ tour card. Like it and doesn't make I any feel sense. Like I played. Yeah. I just, I played <laughs> really good in the majors. I play, I came sick at the players and I'm like on the, if I, if this was a normal year and I am a member, I'm I'm like on the cusp of not making my card, getting my card, and feel like it's. But that's how good the PJ Tour is. So many people play so good in so many events, so it's hard to accumulate enough points to to get a tour card or keep your tour card. So um, I guess that's good. It's competitive. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty happy where I am, and I'm, yeah, of course. I mean, you, you know, just gotta keep just doing then, what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone was in this situation. I feel like so. I don't want to complain about it, which I am. But um, <laughs> no, like, I com- yeah, I complained I, about it for you. You didn't say a word. Yeah. You were the one yeah. that just like, yeah, I agree with you, and I'm yeah. the one complaining. I've been uh, shouting it from the rooftops because I just doesn't make sense. I feel like when you kind of got that special temporary status that's when all the points should start go going to where everybody knows where you stand and honestly from a playing standpoint how much like more clear your mind is about like okay i have a goal that that if i do this i can potentially make the playoffs and it just totally changes your perspective of how aggressive or how well you you may um set your goals and how well you might play yeah that's a i think that's a great way to put it if you get your special temporary member ship your point should accumulate from there because you've given you so like you've proved it. I mean, the the view, yeah, yeah, the viewers that don't know, like you can only get seven starts on the PJ tour. And if you don't get it within the seven, which is, yeah, if you don't get it within the seven events, you can't get that special temporary member and you can't get more starts. But if you do get your special temporary, which is getting the amount of points as last year's 125 FedEx cup list, in those seven events, you've proven yourself that you're good enough and you would have to come top two or a few top fives to make, to get in that 125 or last year's points. That's a pretty good effort, yeah. especially from 20, you know, the probably the average person plays 25 events and you've done it in seven, which is, you know, a quarter. That's pretty, that's pretty darn good. And you should, 
then you know you, you get you can get sponsor invites for the next whatever events and get points. So yeah, I, I think maybe that's got to change, but. Um, maybe yeah, maybe I mean, it'll I think be called like the yourself. Minwoo Lee rule, you know, <laughs> like that would be cool. Like, you know, 20 years from now, they're going to, these kids coming up that are in the same position as you, they're going to be like, Minwoo didn't, he wasn't even <laughs> able to like accumulate points during that time. But yeah, I, it, it, I'm sure it, other people we're in that situation but, but i'm the one that always, came out and helped i'm the one that came out and helped everyone <laughs> hey it's it's the old it's like the old saying goes it's hey it's just play better you know it, it always exactly. takes care of it you know just keep uh, playing exactly. better exactly keep yep. playing better I, I got so tired of explaining what i need to do and what i have to i'm like <laughs> i don't care i'm just going to play golf and if i get my card i get my card I'm, i don't i don't care I don't care what you ask. I just it's going to go play. It was at the open. Like I think if I came like top thirty, I would have definitely locked it up. But I came fortieth, and now I'm on the like cusp of it. So I yeah, I just said whatever. I'm just going to go out and play. Yeah, and uh, this is my last question for you, and it's and it kind of re- revolves around just you growing up in Australia. Um, asked we had Adam Scott on the podcast, and we asked him a similar question just about everybody keeps kind of talking about a global tour and we saw in Adelaide how successful that live golf event was, or at least seemingly it, it, it looked mm-hmm. that way. And I've played the Australian open. I've played the Australian PGA two amazing events with great turnouts for crowds. And it's just a golf hungry country that will support anything that comes their way. I know a global tour for, I imagine you, you would, you would think that anything in Australia would be highly successful. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we can do a PJ tour and then just add a couple of events in Australia. That would be lovely. Um, I don't think it's like golf hunger. I think it's just like we don't get that many events down in Australia. So when there is an event, it's just the turnout is unbelievable. Like I played Aussie Open and Aussie PGA last year, and it was one of like one of the best events I've played. It was the, uh, the golf courses were so good and and the crowd was unbelievable. I was Obviously, I felt like Rory out there and Tiger out there, but um, it was it was amazing. The just having the crowd out there and ah, oh, uh, there needs to be more event. That's end of story. Just more tournaments in Australia. That would be lovely. Um, everywhere else I've been, it hasn't. You know, it's good, but it's not like it's not like Australia. Australia is so good. Um, they love their sports and they love events. It's it just make it makes sense, but. It would be nice if the world somehow brought Australia like halfway for its length because mm-hmm. it's it's a day of flying. So um, especially, yeah, you know, it's 15 hours from America. So uh, if it would if it was shortened a little bit, that would that would that would have helped. That'd be amazing. <laughs> and I said that was my last question. Actually, this one is what's the best course, yep. course in Australia? Oh, OK, that's tough. Um it's the hardest question I've asked all so, night <laughs> or morning yeah, for you. No, sorry. It's, it's, t- it's tough because I haven't played that much on the sand belt, which obviously Royal Melbourne is, you know, mm-hmm. rated one of the rated the best in Australia, one of the best. And um I think I don't know what the fav the best is, but I played Victoria Golf Club and um King uh No, Kingston just your Heath. favorite. Yeah, what's your favorite? Oh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'll just, I'll just, that's so hard. I can't. I can't. I might have to answer uh, for you. What? Uh, I don't know. I was just going to say Royal Melbourne. It just seemed like the the Royal right Melbourne, answer. I I have to play the composite. I think I have to play the composite. Um, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say it's my favorite playing. You know, the one side and the other side. I think mm. it has to have a mix of it for myself. Um, one because I played absolutely terrible at. <laughs> Royal Melbourne, there was there was a tournament called Master of the Amateurs, and I probably shot like a cumulative 40 over for the four <laughs> times I played there. And the east and the east side, I actually came, I don't know, top five or something. And oh, I love that course. So um, but I know West is West is ranked better than the East, but I it's like for my for myself, I think where we played the Aussie Open and the conditions we played, um, Victoria Golf Club and Kingston Heath, mm. that was very good. Um so more like Victorian courses are pretty good, but there's so many gems in Australia. I I could name a few that's just amazing and they should have tournaments there, but uh, it's it's a good place. It's a good place. Yeah. There's a lot of gems. They're just so far away. 
<laughs> we, we, it is very far away. You're exactly right. And, uh, you're very far away. You're it's, what yes. is it? Almost 10 and 10, 10 AM right now. 10 AM. So I got the whole day, but for you, yeah, you may have to go to sleep. Yeah. I, I'm probably going to get to bed <laughs> here pretty soon. Uh, but man, thank you for taking some time and, and make sure you stay away from the coffee this morning. We don't need any, uh, porta potty oh, incidences happening no, over no. in Australia this morning, but Man, I, I can't thank you enough for your time. And uh, I'm going to be cheering you on. And, and Charlie and I are going to keep following your schedule, uh, especially that that big three-week stretch you got coming up. And keep crushing mm-hmm. it, dude. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys, for having me. And, um, yeah, we'll uh, keep a close relationship, do this again. And it's good to see you out there, Smiley. It's great uh, to see you. Thank you, man. Uh, and we, we miss you. We miss you. Uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to keep wooing my way out there and uh, cheering you on, dude. So again, thank you and uh, keep doing your thing.